I did this class uh, at the pandemic camp in Iceland in 2020, which was the quietest and most depressing camp we've ever had. Because um, all of a sudden, loads of people couldn't show. Uh, so it was a pretty, pretty sad experience. Uh, so no one saw it, and uh, there was no videographer, so I recorded it and no one watched it. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> so I thought, it's been almost three years, I can, I can do it again, I may know better this time. Uh, like I said, there is, there is a gi element. Uh, I'm not wearing it currently, but there is a gi aspect, so if you want to train that part, then grab someone who has a jacket. Um, a bit of a safety moment first. Sounds stupid. Um, when I've taught this class uh, at seminars and camps at uh, uh, other places, sometimes people go unconscious during this class. Uh, they get choked out. Um, if you're like keep an eye on your partner, if they go out, normally the first thing you hear is a snoring noise, if you haven't come across it before. That snoring noise is them swallowing their tongue. Um, and so if someone's swallowing their tongue, do not lift up their legs and tilt their head backwards. Like, I know you see it on like, you know, the, the, the Valhalla videos, where like, you know, Valhalla Club, where someone's actually shaking their legs like this. Like, if someone's choking on their tongue, doing this to them isn't going to be good for them. Um, I get the logic of trying to like force blood back into the brain, but they have a heart still. Like, it'll do this job. Like if, it, if it was like super low blood pressure, then yeah, absolutely lift the legs up. But that isn't what caused it. You choked that poor person out. Um, so if a partner goes out, lie them on their side in Running Man um, and let their tongue just roll out. If they're sick or something like that, they don't then choke on it. It's just a safety precaution. Um, I say that because <laughs> I once had a dude black out three times in this one session. Like, in the same goddamn drill, he just kept blacking out. He didn't take the hint after the second time. Um, he went out again. Um, I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> but I have to... Were you all joking? No, I was watching. Like, he went out the first time. I was like, oh, oh shit, like, let go of him. I was like, you okay? Like, cool, carry on drilling. He goes out again. I was like, ah, don't do that again. This is getting silly. And so he drills it once more, he blacks out again. Like, you haven't taken the hint, obviously. This is a purple belt. Um, the reason this will happen then is because when we, when we do this like first choke, normally if you've done jujitsu for any period of time, you're conditioned to tap when you feel pain, not the choke itself. And so when the pain doesn't come, you're like, nothing's happening, nothing. And you just go out, okay? And it's usually, I say blue belts or not, that usually have this problem of staying awake. Um, and all we're going to do is just essentially a rear naked choke, but with zero effort. Uh, how about you, sir? You're closest. Okay. Unfortunate for you. <laughs> uh, so your partner's just going to sit in front of you uh, on their knees. Uh, around, basically, the, the lovely people. Um, and you're going to do a rear naked choke, but the amount of effort required is completely minimal. I'm closing two straws, okay? I'm not breaking bone, I do not have to squeeze. The accuracy I want is these corners here. Anything more around the sides or the windpipe isn't what I'm after. I'm trying to stop blood going through his brain. I'm gonna go with an open arm. I'm gonna make sure I can feel this wind, windpipe against my elbow. And then I'm just gonna put, imagine there's those two McDonald's straws, drink straws running up his neck. I'm just trying to close them. And the amount of effort required is gonna be one-handed. And then I'm gonna stay completely fucking still. And it'll go. Like the amount of effort, like, it feels weird, doesn't it? There's no yeah, pain, yeah. but all of a sudden your head feels like it's filling up like it's a little bit of pressure. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the problem, is that if he's conditioned to expect pain, he's going to like go, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and then go out. Over in the front, close up those straws up. More, no effort required, just patience. And he'll, he'll go. Okay? Try that. Zero effort, red naked chokes. Enjoy. Make sense? Not make sense? Effortless. Uh, you shouldn't have had to squeeze. Like, and everyone's gonna know, this feels weird. Um, so that's what happens if you get like perfect accuracy around the neck. Like you, you, you're touching the uh, 
Yaris and you actually don't require a squeeze. This is that what causes the problem, in, uh, especially in competition, is that I talked about false positives in my, uh, my other, other class, um, where in the gym you attack to pain, etc., and uh, you, you, your, your chokes aren't accurate. You then go into a competition and there's someone who does not give a shit and will, will, their adrenaline allows them to go for the pain. And then they're just there surviving the choke for like half a minute or a minute and you think, the fuck does this person breathe out their asshole? Have they got this? <laughs> no, we're, we're all human still. You're messing up. And because of like not having the accuracy drilled into you in, in proper training, it's a false positive. You're not actually doing chokes, you're just getting pain taps. Um, and so I do try and like uh, encourage people to try and do their chokes with very good control and zero effort on the choke. And so they get actually really good accuracy on their chokes, not just, oh, I'll just squeeze harder. Because there's plenty of videos out there about engaging your back and like which muscles to use. And again, it's only two straws. Like why are you taking your entire like posterior chain to close up two straws? That makes no sense. Um, so, uh, shit. I'll borrow you again. You get to get revenge. Sure. Um, you do not have to do a really choke properly. Yeah. Probably. Thank God. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so behind me, go around my neck. Okay. So now I'm just going to change to stay where you are. Squeeze. Go for a very naked. Like a proper one. So, okay, we're going to hold it here for a bit. So you just saw, he ha I had a, a, an effortless very naked choke on him. And I got attacked pretty easily. Keep squeezing, fuck's sake. He's got one around my neck still. And I'm fine. I don't have girls, I'm not breathing out of my asshole. Um, it's just I fucked with his accuracy. I've turned the corner, and now, instead of hitting those arteries, they're here, they're open. He's now hitting the side of my neck. He's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? I've got a choke on him. Like, why can't he die? Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the problem, is that the accuracy can go off, and you can expend so much energy, and that would be then the problem is, in, you know, some of you may have competed in the past, is that you'll get chokes on people, you'll burn your arms out, get no choke, they don't black out, your arms fall off, and then you're like, oh no, <laughs> I, I pissed them off. Um, so, please be careful like with this. It is obviously hitting bone and muscle right now, and it's gonna suck. Bit of advice, don't stick your head in chokes, but if you do, turn the corner. And what the, the corner you're gonna turn is go look at the armpit that's, that's offending you, as in go sniff their armpit and put the, sh the corner of your shoulder in the middle of their sternum. So as soon as the arm comes around your neck, just go here, stick your shoulder in the middle of the chest, and then again, don't be a dick and like just hurt your partner's neck. It is gonna suck a little bit, but you're gonna feel like there is no choke. So maximum effort, no choke. Minimum effort with good accuracy, perfect choke. Weird. Go feel that. Uh, so it's not a drill, it's just, uh, okay, maybe. It's, it's Chris is right or something. Um, off you go, feel it. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So again, I don't want to do that. So, yep. That's not work. It's a light defense, or do we have to be just quicker than Well, as soon as the arm appears, you know which way to go. And actually, we're going to answer that in the next one, weirdly. Um, so. Being super late, yeah, you're, you're going, it's going to suck. Like, you, you fucked up. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Bluebell, can I borrow you, please? Do you know the bow and arrow trick? Yeah. Pretty good the other day, but I'm going to do it as well. Party trick. Can you bow and arrow trick me, please? Okay. Go for it. Do it once so I can feel it. This way. Uh, okay, do it again. Cool. Go. <laughs> do it again. Do it properly this time. You look like a fool. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> so you got it? No, oh, no, you haven't. I like this. It's quite humiliating. It's quite humiliating, I know. Um, so, this is why I said you may want a geek part of this, because it helps make things make sense. Uh, if someone goes around your collar and pulls, 
they're going to choke you. They're trying to create that V in front of your neck again, and half the, half the size is the collar and the thumb, affecting the artery, and the other side is the, the blade of the wrist. But on the other side, they have a hand that's doing a break, and it's stopping you from turning. If I just turn on the choke, there is no choke. So if you go behind me again, just like go on your knees. Uh, if he goes around my neck and grabs hold of my collar, just stay there. <laughs> just turn around. <laughs> I don't have to try and strip his grips. Just go look at him. <laughs> it's weird. Um, so you can give up your neck. Giving up your neck is fine. So you can, you can go up your collars, you have to defend the choke, so they go around your neck. And then you just turn. Because the second that hand appears, you know which way you have to go. Just don't resist it. Just go look at it. And that's all I was doing on that, that bow and arrow, is he's, he's, he's got hold of my gi pants, so essentially he's trying to use this to stop me from turning, and he's sliding around my collar. But grabbing hold of the gi pants offers no kind of grip over me. I can spin in my pants. And so I just barrel roll out of it. And it's the exact same when someone's going for a rear naked, is that especially if they've got like a seatbelt going on, you know which arm's gonna go around your neck, you know which way you need to be turning. So start getting you like that in the middle of there and there won't be a choke. Like, that's why I, like this whole defensive BJJ that uh, pre espouses, that's why I feel super, super comfortable keeping my hands down. Because the second your arm appears, you're showing me your hand and I know which way to turn to kill your chokes. It's actually, it's a problem. It's, it's again one of those false positive issues. Is we're very good at getting the, the collar first and very terrible at getting our control hand second. So imagine I've got like an hourglass um, and I flip it upside down, but it's been colored in. I can't see how much sand is in the hourglass. There could be two grains of sand. There could be like half an hour's worth of sand. I don't know. All I know is I'm gonna turn it upside down. And that's what happens when the break hand comes in. So normally when someone goes behind me and goes to my collar, so that's them turning the hourglass upside down. The end of the sand is them getting the control hand in. Because as soon as the control hand comes in, now I can't spin anymore and now he's gonna choke me. Does that make sense? So the second that hand appears, I don't wait. I just go because I don't know how much time I have. So that's why I'm very comfortable showing my back. I can like, play with someone, turn my back and go cool, grab my collar. Second that appears, cool, let's go back again. Uh, if, I, if I wait, I don't know how long I've got until that second hand comes in and stops him from turning. And all those kind of like really cool Instagrammable chokes that you have, don't fucking work. <laughs> Helicopter chokes. So we go turtle please. Normal human turtle, not cool turtle. Thank you. <laughs> so helicopter choke, grab hold the collar, I'm gonna spin around, grab hold his arm. Woo! And we have a cool Instagram choke. Except I had to get his armpit. I had to get my break hand in. If I never got this in, and he just spun, there wasn't a choke. So, the second that hand appears, so I'll do it again, here, he knows which way he has to spin. So, yeah, I, I can't get it. Right? The second I'm like, cool, I'm gonna go look fucking awesome, there's people watching. Optex. <laughs> it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> That's the same with so many chokes, clock chokes, same thing. I could be in turtle here, and the second this hand appears, even the fact that this hand has gone over the top, he knows which way he has to spin now to get out of his choke. I'm like, cool, fuck you, bollocks. That's annoying. And when we first started bringing this into my gym, like five years ago, we went for a period of time when no one got chokes, because we've been conditioned for so long to go for the collar first and control second, and everyone was just spinning. And so for the longest time, I couldn't even choke white belts. Do you know how depressing that is? <laughs> that you can't fucking throttle a white belt when you feel bad. You've had a bad day, you wanna to go to the gym and you fuck someone up and they just spin out of all your chokes. <laughs> it's, it's so sad. Um, I've talked a lot. If you haven't, yep. Um, depends, that's the problem. Is that if they do have hooks in, are they actually consciously controlling you with their hooks? or they're just there for gathering points. Yeah. If someone like goes behind my back and has like slack hooks here and they go around my neck still, yeah, they're probably still turn. They're not doing anything with them. Like it actually makes you really appreciate what your hooks should be doing. Like you actually, that's one of the side effects again. Like when we get control, those hooks become very active and like dig into the legs and we find new and interesting ways of holding their body so they can't spin. 
Um, but as, as Preet said in his, like, um, his uh, extra session he did on, on Monday night about this, you deny hooks all the time. Those hooks don't come in. And so that's why I feel super comfortable showing the back. And that's why like, like uh, when people pass my garden and I play running man, they go, smack. I'm happy go giving my back up because he can have my collars. It doesn't matter. I'll just spin the second he grabs hold of one. He has no control over me. So it is, like Poot said, you can show your back if you know how to defend your back. And this is one of those core details about defending your back. The second someone grabs hold of your collar, just spin. Um, there are numerous people with jackets on. If you are grabbing a jacketed person, just feel this. It's quite interesting because then you can go back and piss off everyone in your, in your home gyms. <laughs> but yeah, that, if you want to try to bow an arrow or something like that, just feel how like, annoying it is. The second that hand appears, just turn. Does that make sense? So, like, right, 30 seconds. Off you go. Uh, <laughs> So, there's two forms of chokes then. There is um, head only and head and arm. Um, head only, we've just done. If the accuracy is good, we got a choke. If the accuracy is fucked, uh, we get no choke. And then you have head and arm, which is on the one side, you're using part of your body to, to do the artery. On the other side, it's their, their shoulder, their, their, I try and think more of their trap. If anyone's in Paul's class yesterday, he used knuckles as well. Um, he's a bad man. Uh, <laughs> but it's the same idea. I just want to jam something into the arteries. Um, we're going to look at like a few chokes that are all the same idea. Uh, and hopefully I can fix your chokes and you, it's going to be a really violent rest of the week. Uh, first one we're going to look at then is um, the triangle, arm triangle, slash bomb flu choke, all at the same time. Um, first one then is the bomb flu. One of those uh, chokes that people like, abandon eventually. It's a shame. So you got closest. Good day is really nice. Uh, next part of the class is going to be sitting at the back. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I have a preference. Thank you. So Von Flu, someone's got you in a guillotine and you've jumped your body onto the other side of theirs. And then, again, this is why this, this works, is that the V they're trying to create, the one that should be impacting into your arteries, is sitting now behind your neck. That's why, no matter how much they squeeze, nothing's happening because there's no arteries back here. That's why if you've got a guillotine on me here, look, the V he's created at his elbow, there's nothing there. So as much as he wants to squeeze, all he's gonna do is hurt my spine. And if he's got giant arms, yeah, maybe he will, but I'm not gonna die, uh, unless he breaks my neck. Um, so the choke I'm gonna do, the Von Flew, I only realized this since the last video, and it's, it's just solved so many problems for me. I'm gonna make sure that my arm is straight until the very end. If I go with a bent arm and their neck impacts my arm here, I've got no extra squeeze. I can't suddenly grow extra bicep at that point in time and like close up the choke. But I'm missing so much more of my arm. If I make their arm, their neck touch here first, by the time I'm even doing this, there's already a choke being applied. So by the time I get back to my normal squeezing um, real estate, it's already on. So he's got a hold of my neck. I'm gonna go underneath his neck here. I'm gonna pull him up onto his side because I wanna be able to hit his artery. Arm goes straight. And I keep it as straight as possible and I become, I become super sensitive of my inner elbow and I want to make sure I can feel something against my inner elbow at all times. Keep it super straight, keep it attached to his neck. I can get a grip if I want, I don't have to. I'm just make, the only purpose of this hand is just to make sure I'm still touching his neck. On the other side, because he's done this with his, uh, with his arm, he's got a super wide shoulder, which is gonna impact into his neck. That's why this choke works. And all I'm gonna do is just move my ear a little bit towards his, and that's gonna push his shoulder up to here. Again, Paul talked to him, it was a brilliant class. It was all about how you're using their shoulder to impact into their neck. It doesn't have to be a cross. It can still be here and do the same job. We are poorly built, like, I would sack God, like he has <laughs> built us wrong, that we can just go, we can kill ourselves. <laughs> That's poor design. <laughs> Here, impact, gable grip if you want it. Shoulder, head a little bit towards his ears, and just lie down slowly. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> I didn't have to walk around, lean on his head or anything like that. Just because I, I had an open arm initially, 
required zero effort for the eventual, I didn't even squeeze. <laughs> That's insane. I didn't have to like lean onto my shoulder and try and like do the shoulder adjustments into his head. All I did was literally move my ear an inch this way. So his shoulder came up and then slowly lean him into my elbow and the choke happened. He's got hold, lift him, arm goes straight, keep that connection. Ear goes up, line down, and it's about that much effort. Off you go. Does that make sense? Drinking game. Um, <laughs> did it work? Not work? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, I know it worked on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good accuracy and good connection with that inner elbow. Like this fixed so many chokes for me. Instead of going with a bent arm, going with a straight arm. Like all of a sudden, loads of chokes that I kind of like not had working as effectively throughout the years, all of a sudden really made sense. Um, so the next one I'm going to look at then is the the head and arm, the arm triangle, whatever you want to call it. I know Dustin did it the other day as well. Um, it's essentially the same choke, just of your body on the other side. Um, <laughs> so, uh, go back to where we were initially with the bomb flu. So, thank you. <laughs> I'll explain this as well. Um, so, I have my straight arm going through his neck, I have my connection, and I'm pushing his arm up towards his, his shoulder up towards his ears. So, on the one side, my shoulder is impacting his artery, on the other side, it's his shoulder impacting the other artery. So, the only difference between this and an arm triangle, just take your hand out is one side of my body's here, one side of my body's here. But the logic remains the same, is that I'm still pushing his shoulder up towards his ears, and my bicep is still impacting his artery on the other side. It's just my body has now changed sides of his. Same choke, same thing works. So, again, if I go with a bent arm, I'm missing so much more real estate, that's gonna take so much more effort to squeeze. But going with a straight arm, become hyper aware of, the, of my inner elbow, make sure he touches first before I close, and the next part is I want his shoulder up towards his ear. I want to actually make my initial uh, landfall on his body about here. Like I want to take his entire shoulder structure up towards his head. In fact, he just has his arm across his face. That's not, uh, there's a gap. But if I take his entire shoulder up, that's going to catch him. So I've got my open elbow. It makes landfall. I'm going to show you my hand initially, just so you can see where I want my my, uh, my apex of my chest here to be hitting. I'm going to be touching back here. And all I'm going to do is push his entire shoulder structure north. Again, that's how much effort is actually required. None of this like big squeezes or anything like that. I mean, you can shorten your grips, and we'll talk about that in a second. But for actual impact, I just want here open elbow. Keep, I'm pushing him into my open elbow as well. At no point does, I, does my open elbow lose contact with him. It always stays connected. Connection, keep connection. Bottom of his uh, lap, pushes up towards his ears. So in, in actuality, I'd start low here. So I'm starting like low against his shoulder. I'm just pushing his shoulder up towards his ears. That's why if he does the whole Eddie Bravo answering the phone, like putting his hand to his ears, that actually makes my life easier because now his shoulder's massive. Like, thank you, Eddie Bravo. You've made my life easier choking people. Because now he's got a giant shoulder that I want to push that thing up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you. <laughs> like, please tell people to keep reading and watching Eddie Bravo videos because it makes your chokes easier. <laughs> <laughs> Make them train wrong. Um, everyone happy with that? Um, it's super simple chokes, everyone in this room already knows, but like just head and arm chokes, one flu chokes. Oh, I thought you were going to Just stretching. Um, yeah, so I don't want to push his shoulder away from him. I want his shoulder to come forwards and up. That's why I'm not lying down on him, necessarily. I'm actually going underneath his shoulder and elevating forwards, away from him and up towards this corner. I know what I want to hit. So I'll just do it once more. So. Here, yeah. so I'm not dropping his shoulder away from him. I'm not pushing his shoulder down away from his neck. I'm actually creating a slight lift up towards his ears. 
So I'm pushing him towards, making that connection. I'm going underneath his lap and pushing his shoulder up towards his eyes. I get my choke. For grips, um, gable's good if you have short arms. Uh, a butterfly, which is just a slip gable, is better if you have long arms because then you're taking a lot of slack out the choke. Um, I stole this from Sven uh, via Charles. This is a really good like side locking grip, as it kind of like as you as you go for the gable when you go over your thumb and your elbows flare, it kind of locks itself in, in place quite well. So it's good for side pulling, but terrible for clinch throws because my elbows don't really touch as effectively. The one that Sven does is he opens up his index and his middle finger, puts his thumb in there for a modified gable, which allows better elbow gripping for like uh, Japanese neckties, but terrible for, for locking as your elbows open again. Just a, a slight detail when it comes to grips that I found really intriguing. But for this one, we're either using a regular gable or a slip gable down into my forearms, a butterfly grip. So same thing, just slip, and that allows a lot tighter. So if I, sorry, your, <laughs> your day is shit. <laughs> got the impact. I can either go for a gable, or if I want to shorten it, because I've got long arms, I'll go for a modified, start low. And that's all I need. Enjoy. <laughs> So, to assist in that previous choke, again I said von flu, triangle and arm triangle, they're all the same choke. We've got, all chokes are the same. Um, this blew my mind and I got a, uh, where is he? Thank, thank John for, his, uh, for booking Chelsea, Chelsea Lee at his gym because this broke my mind. Goddamn amazing. Uh, sorry. <laughs> triangle. So, welcome to the triangle. I'm going to apply all those same ideas again. If I go with a bent leg, I'm not impacting, uh, I'm missing out a lot of real estate. Can you triangle? Not well. Can you triangle? Yeah, I'll borrow you this. <laughs> <laughs> triangle me, I feel it. <laughs> You've got giant legs, this is my stupid idea. <laughs> Okay, cool. Go <laughs> again. Is that better? No. <laughs> no chance. No? <laughs> um, why? So, the reason why you couldn't triangle me, I fucked his accuracy up. Again, that's not good defense. Like, this sucks, don't put your head in triangles. Thank you. Oh, I'll put you in. I'm consistent. Um, so, the reason why I completely fucked that one up for him is, again, what are you actually trying to make contact with? And I want to impact his artery with my hamstring. Like, bicep and hamstring, same thing. Um, if, the reason I fucked that one up is because I looked over there. And now the landfall is on the back of his spine here. There's no arteries back there. And this is what I stole from Chelsea. If I twist his head this way, his artery is now hitting my hamstring. And the choke happens. And on the other side, I don't have to bring the arm across. I want his If he's got giant shoulders, I may have to shorten his shoulders a little bit by taking it across. I actually prefer it because my, well, especially my leg length and people I normally fight, I like it their, their shoulder wide. Is I'm going to try and drag his shoulder again up across his eyes. So if I even close my triangle, I don't need to. I, I do to hold him, but the actual squeeze isn't from me locking my legs. I'm, I'm catching his uh, lat with my with my thigh. I think uh, Lilo did a bit of this as well. I'm catching his lap with my thigh and dragging his shoulder forwards this way, with this leg. And on this side, all I'm doing is just turning his head 30 degrees, and now his, his neck is actually hitting my hamstring. So instead of pulling down and going nuts or anything like that and, and squeezing like, like it matters, I can lock up my triangle, twirl his head. It's horrible. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, if you look that way, 
over there, right? It'll actually take me a lot longer. I'm actually, you can feel the difference. You can feel the impact points back here. <laughs> if I go with a bent leg, I've now missed so much extra hamstring. Same as like opening, going with an open elbow, and I want to um, have an awareness of my inner, inner knee. Here. There. Obviously you wouldn't do this normally, you're going to snap triangles at random like shit. Okay, but then you should be able to figure out why it is and is not working. And that's kind of the crux of all this. I'm not teaching you submissions you don't know, you know all these. I'm trying to teach you why they work so you can critique your own work and not just squeeze harder. Essentially the same what, what Paul was saying. And so you can look and think, right, am I hitting the same point or am I just going to have to squeeze harder? Like I showed at the beginning, it's not about squeezing harder. Your accuracy is stupid. That's what's fucking you up. If I fix my accuracy, it should work perfectly. This is why I love the, the seminar of Chelsea. Chelsea like fights like 49 kilos. Like she is tiny. If she can make a triangle work, I want to know how the hell she did it. Like if I have a dude of giant legs who can like I don't know, rip phone books in half with his feet, like he's going to be able to triangle anyone. But if a 49 kilo woman can do the exact same thing, that's interesting. So literally make them look at your leg. That's it. 30 degree change. That's all that's required. And just pulling the shoulder this way. And then you can take that exact same back idea back into your arm triangle and your von flu. And it's the exact same again. So he is, that's why I'm pushing him away. Cause now he's hitting my hamstring. If he's facing this way, I'm just hitting his, his spine. And that's going to require more squeeze and things go wrong for me. A slight tilt is now hitting the exact right point I want. In. That's why this. When he has hold of my head, I don't just suddenly just when it's flat, plow in and just crush his face because my accuracy is wrong. I lift him, the exact same thing we've just done, make him look at the choke, and then line back down again. Shoulder up towards his ears. Those three chokes are the exact same. Uh, the, the, the concept behind all three doesn't change. Make sense? Go fill those triangles. Mm -hmm. Up you go. <laughs> make sense? Not make sense? If it doesn't make sense, please, like, uh, a nightmare of my, I, there's so many good instructors here, and I've done these camps for 10 years, um, and I've booked enough seminars, been to enough seminars over my time, and my, my worst nightmare is that you'd come see me, spend an hour of your time and your money, and walk away with nothing. Um, I want to make sure that you, you go away understanding jujitsu better, understanding why you do what you do. And so if there's any problems, please, for the love of God, ask me. I'd rather you walk away and instead of, how many times have you been to a seminar before? And go, oh, game changing. What did you learn like six months later? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> like, that is a nightmare, yes? Sorry, we didn't have a question with the triangle. Yep. Um, is, so since we were just practicing with the head, yeah. but in another scenario where the side bends you, to get the triangle in, so what you're showing to look? Yeah, yeah, when you turn around the corner? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it necessary or is it just? It, it, one of the benefits of turning the corner is that instead of having my legs uh, my, my hips like this, I can like essentially use my hamstrings to do the same job. But oddly enough, the next show we're going to do is going to address that very problem. And I think Lilo did it as well. Um, I'm just stealing everyone's ideas. Um, so I'm going to set you, I'm going to run out of time, five minutes. Uh, you're going to fix a choke. Um, I'm going to show you a choke and you're going to go away and you're going to spend like two or three minutes between you and you're going to fix a choke. And the choke you're going to do is the inverted triangle. Um, one of those ones that it's, it's really good if you know what the fuck you're doing. Uh, so I'm gonna show you it in really basic terms and then you're gonna fix it. So you're gonna start from side control. You're gonna put their arm in between your legs. You're gonna push their head in between. And this is your inverted triangle kind of like beginning. But obviously it's fucked up because the V I've created is at the back of his neck. And his arm is all the way over there. How am I gonna get his shoulder involved? Okay, and so this is your start position. I started here, push his head through, and you're gonna start from here and fix this choke. Using what you've seen today about accuracy, about making sure the, the shoulder's connecting correctly, and uh, you're actually making good landfall on the artery of the part of your body that's involved. Make sense?
There's various ways of doing it, but I have a preference. I want to see what you guys come up with. Two minutes, go figure it out. Fix this chunk. Thank you. I just want to make you curious about, like, okay, there's a problem, how do we fix it? Um, sometimes like, you'll, you'll get chokes and there isn't a fix. Like, the angle's so fucked up that you're not going to be able to fix it. Um, at which point, the answer isn't just squeeze harder. As you saw right at the beginning, when I completely fucked up the rear naked choke, doesn't matter how much he's going to squeeze, and, you know, especially if my adrenaline's going, he isn't going to win, he's just going to burn himself out. Um, and so being able to critique your work and go, right, am I accurate? is super important when it comes to all of this. Um, so to fix this choke, I loved this choke for so long, but couldn't finish it, because it was just so available. Um, until I then had these ideas, I then went back through my work and applied. And all of a sudden I was then landing this choke after like a decade of doing it wrong. So the problem we have then is, the accuracy is all fucked, is I'm hitting the wrong part of his neck. But, and this goes into your question, if I elevate him, ever so slightly with my knee and kick him slightly above me. Now, he's actually hitting my hamstring. So if he's down here, the V's wrong. It's hitting the back of his neck. But if I just kick him this way, the V is now impacting his artery. And then with this leg, I'm gonna kick it that way. Because now I'm, I'm, I'm impacting his lap. And the show works. <laughs> So I could take something that I was doing wrong for so long, apply this, this logic, and all of a sudden show it works. So going back to your question about the, the angle triangle. I prefer doing this personally, but again, like, this is what Lilo was doing, is that it's, it's impacting up into his throat. And then I can use my legs to pull his shoulder against his neck, pulling it forwards. There was a kid, God, about 10 years ago, he was winning so many competitions in the States. Because what he was doing is going underneath the person after this. He had long legs and he was quite flexible. He was just getting hold and then getting the body lock and then using that to like rotate underneath. It was goddamn terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> um, okay, I'll show that uh, inverted one once more. Sorry, you're yeah, not you're good. <laughs> you will never come to any of my again. <laughs> Here, again, the squeeze is just wrong. And I've seen people try and grab the arm and in drilling it can't make sense. But he's just gonna pull his arm away. Like, who's gonna win this? He's gonna win. I'm not gonna get anything here. But, slight like inversion. Now he's actually making contact. This leg is gonna drag his lap and his shoulder this way. Effortless. And that's why you come across a lot of chokes that seem cranky. Darces, prime example. Who here has been Darcy? That was a crank, man. Like, you didn't win, really. All right. <laughs> It's like AA or like, you've been abused. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, I have preference. Um, I get slash choke out, me. So again, like, why is my choke failing? Where am I touching? You, we've all got feeling in our arms, I hope. Um, so I know what part of his neck is touching my arm. If I go through here, it's my forearm impacting this part of his neck. I know where his arteries are. They're here. <laughs> so if I'm here and I now push his head so I can now feel him touching my elbow, now there isn't a crank. I keep that connection and I want to drag his shoulder towards his ears. Yeah, no squeeze required. But if you've got super shallow and there's a gap in your elbow, now it's your forearm hitting the side of the neck. And then you get the cranky, horrible darces that everyone whinges about. It's just because you fucked up, you try and squeeze it out. That sounds weird. Um, <laughs> so I took this idea and I applied it across all these different chokes. I went, right, am I actually touching here or am I just squeezing more? Am I just pushing the shoulder against the face or am I actually bringing the shoulder up into the neck? And it fixed so much. Am I going with a bent elbow and missing prime real estate or can I do it with a straight arm and get an easier choke? And for the years, I couldn't do north-south chokes bane of my existence until I started doing this. So now when I do north-south, I go this, uh, I do this way. I go with a straight arm, I make sure he's touching my inner elbow first, my hands near my thigh, and as I reverse, I keep that connection, the choke comes off. Instead of just going underneath and trying to squeeze wildly with 
missing prime real estate in such a weird angle. Straight up. Keep the connection and just reverse into it. Quite high up, pushing, his, pushing my ribs into his other side of his neck and now he's impacting my inner, inner arm. I keep the connection to both sides of his arteries. I'm aware of them, I have feeling and sensitivity. So it comes on. Other problem, and I will let you leave in a second, is which part of your body you're using. Um, I said about the other day about being right-handed or left-handed. I'm right-handed and right leg, so I get better squeezes out of this side. I may be able to get it on the other side, but this is my strong side. So I realize that when I play side control, if I'm in normal side side control, I'm better at Darces and Kimuras because my right hand is doing the work and that's my regular squeezing arm. But I couldn't fit north south on this side because it's my left arm, it's weak. And I realized when I'm on the other side of side control, this is my good arm. This makes more sense for catching guillotines and north south chokes and not Darces because this is my strong arm again. So instead of having a shit mirror image side control, I have a 360 degree gain that changes depending on which side I'm at. So sometimes it can be, just be the case that you're using the wrong arm to try and finish your choke, so you try and finish with the wrong leg. You may get it, but there's a higher chance of failure. If you have any questions on anything like this, or if you want to just like workshop and finish, like figure out chokes together, please come grab me. Uh, otherwise, I'll give you a minute or two to, to, to get your thoughts together, and then there's the next class. But thank you for your time. Thank you.